So this presentation is on Camp Cape Cod. The few people who know about this camp would assume that its story starts and ends in the small town of Mashpee, Massachusetts. While its story ends there, we will cover far more history than that. Camp Cape Cod was the first camp to issue a patch on the peninsula, but it was not the first to operate on Cape Cod. That honor goes to Camp Kinraid on Spectacle Pond in, Mashpee, Mass in Sandwich, Massachusetts. This temporary camp was operated for a two-week period in the summer of 1913 by the first Scout Council on the Cape, Sandwich Council, which was established in 1912. This camp was named after the landowner who donated the use of the land. Camp Keith was the next camp of Cape Cod. This was the service camp that the boys maintained at the Barnesville County Fair. From at least 1913 to at least 1918, the scouts administered aid and performed scout craft demonstrations for the patrons of the fair. This camp was named after Evan S.S. Keith, a benefactor and vice president of the Barnesville County Fair, or Barnesville County Council, sorry, who donated the use of various equipment for the boys to use. He was also the owner of Keith Car Manufacturing Company in Sagamore, Massachusetts, and was a Massachusetts state senator who held the scouting movement in high regard. Keith also let troops use land on his railway car manufacturing plant as a temporary camp. This camp was give, also given the same name as the one at the Barnesville County Fair, Camp Keith. The land that Camp Trequocket was located on was purchased in 1914 in East Ham, Massachusetts by an unknown party. We don't know what camp council this camp was associated with or if it even operated at all. Only two newspaper articles have been found thus far regarding this camp. Uh, the two camps operated by the Barnesville County Council was Camp Russell and Camp Marston. These two camps were named after a father and son. The son, Howard Marston, is arguably the father of scouting on, camp, on Cape Cod and served as a vice president of the Barnesville County Council. In 1916, when the council was searching for a parcel of land for a permanent camp location, they acquired a piece of land that Howard Marston's father actually laid out some years before and was named in Russell Marston's honor. Camp Russell closed its doors in 1924. This was also the year Howard Marston passed away. During the summer of 1924, a temporary camp was held somewhere in Vermont. Camp Marston was named in honor of Howard Marston's devotion to scouting in the last years of his life. The last early camp on Cape Cod was in Truro, interestingly enough, called Camp Truro. Camp Truro was a temporary camp operated for the scouts of the Fall River Council in the summer of 1920. Fall River Boy Scout Band left Fall River and made their way to the Cape where they performed concerts across the county. During their short stay down Cape, the boys maintained a campsite in the dunes for several days. These were the various camps that have been uncovered on Cape Cod prior to 1925. No patches were issued for any of these previously mentioned camps. Hopefully more will come to light through continuous research. Following the dissolution of Barnesville County Council in 1925, the newly formed Cape Cod Council needed a camping location to facilitate the scouting program. Now, over a three-week period over the summer of 1926, the council used a piece of land on the western shore of Great Herring Pond, owned by Count... Council Vice President Evan S.S. Keith and borrowed equipment from Council Commissioner A.D. Benson. The temporary camp was devoted to scout advancement for the first two weeks, and the third week was devoted to patrol leader development. By all accounts, the first camp on Great Herring Pond was a great success, though no patches were issued for this first Camp Norse. Here are some photos from around the camp during the first year, showing some various scouting activities, including signaling, swimming, first aid, physical exercise, and the ever-important flag-raising ceremony. Not pictured is the camp's very own sloop that they used on the pond, the Black Duck. Now, these photos came from a 12-page pamphlet put out by the council in late 1926. These are the only photos of this camp uh, during, these, during this three-week period. Film reels were taken of the scouts going about their activities, though, although the whereabouts of these reels are uncertain. Over the winter of 1926-1927, Cape Cod Council purchased a 55-acre parcel of land on the eastern shore of Wake P. Lake in Mashpee, Massachusetts. This camp was also named Camp Norse. Now, equipped with a mess hall, kitchen, ceremony field, and a cabin, which served as a council as a camp headquarters. During the only year uh, that it was named Camp Norse, it also played host to a number of events, including hosting the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce with a clam bake cooked and served by the scouts of Cape Cod. The camp also hosted several camperies and field days. 
Uh, like most other camps, Camp Cape Cod had its own honor camper award. The Bacon Honor Award was introduced in 1927 at the permanent location of Camp Norse in Mashpee. This award was named after Council President Dr. Gorham Bacon of Yarmouthport. The Bacon Honor Medal was only awarded to those scouts who attended summer camp and, quote, whose work and conduct received the unanimous approval of the camp staff, end quote. This medal was also a significant deal to the camp and council because although it was an honor earned at the camp itself, the actual Bacon Honor Medal was presented yearly at the council meeting in the fall of the year. Although no image of this medal has ever come down to us, on the right side is an artist rendition of the medal. Between 1927 and 1930, over a dozen scouts were awarded this medal from all over Cape Cod. As an aside, one Falmouth scout who was awarded this medal was Minnow Tripp. Second class scout Tripp, the youngest recipient of this award at age 14, which is why he was selected to join three other Cape Cod scouts at the 1929 World Scout Jamboree in England. Two other notable members of the 1929 contingent uh, were Ronald Brogan of Hyannis, the Cape's first Eagle Scout, and their leader, Wilfred Slade of Provincetown, the Cape's first Lone Scout. At the 1928 council meeting, the name of the campsite on Wapey Lake was changed to Camp Cape Cod. The camp kept its name until it was sold off in 1933. Starting in 1929, Nurembega Council took joint ownership operation of Camp Cape Cod. This was also the year that the camp was finally issued its first patch. A felt red inverted half dome with a white felt sailboat and a navy blue felt CC inside of a larger navy blue C in the top left corner. These patches were all handmade, so each one is slightly different. These patches also never almost never come up for sale and are highly sought after by those who collect New England and early camps. Uh, in the 1930s, a second patch was also issued for the camp, a light blue felt circle patch with an orange felt border, orange felt map of Cape Cod, and a white felt sea and herring gulls stitched over the map. This patch is also incredibly rare. I personally only first saw this patch when I started talking to Rob Cutts about Camp Cape Cod. This patch too also never comes up for sale and is also highly sought after. In 1931, Nurembega Council assumed full control of camp operations, complete with a full staff and equipment from Newton, Mass. Uh, the first nail in Camp Cape Cod's coffin came in January 1932. Cape Cod Council was feeling the effects of the Great Depression and decided to consolidate its operation. Liquidating the camp was just one part of the process. Some other parts of that process included getting rid of all other parts of the council outside of Barnesville County. The town of Plymouth County went to Anawan Council, and the two islands of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket went to New Bedford Council. The islands wouldn't come back to Cape, Cape Cod Council for another 20 years when they both left Cashlot Council after years of dissatisfaction. The end of Camp Cape Cod came in the fall of 1933 when the property was sold off to a private citizen from New York. Although Camp Cape Cod was only operated for seven years, its impact on the boys of Cape Cod, the islands, and Narambega areas of the time is immeasurable. The two patches issued for this camp are incredibly rare and almost never come up for sale. The pamphlet that mentioned from earlier in the presentation is, as far as I can tell, the only one that's come up for sale and I have in my collection. The other two patches mentioned in this uh, presentation, I do not have. And if you have a spare, let me know. I was wondering, um, is Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket in the Cape Cod Council at all? Uh, yes, yeah. they both joined, or both the islands joined in the 20s. And they, got, they came back to uh, Cape Cod Council in 1956. And they've stayed a part of it ever since. Yeah, the council now is called Cape, the Cape Cod and Islands Council number number 224. So there's scout troops out there, Martha's Vineyard. There are. And um, about a month ago, uh, we had our first uh, female Eagle Scout, uh, and she came from Martha's Vineyard. Where is the camp currently served by that area? Uh, the current camp is Camp Reno, and that's down in Yarmouth. There is a camp on uh, Nantucket, Camp Richard. Like for weekend camping? Yep. There is, or at least used to be, a camp on Martha's Vineyard as well, Camp Duarte. Yes, that still exists. 